Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode on the Bodybuilding News Network, BNN for short. I'm your host, as always, Sanch. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this channel. At the end of the video, if you consider, if you find yourself enjoying the style of content, you enjoyed what I do here, consider subscribing, liking the video, and continuing the conversation in the comment sections below. But as you can see, we're going to be recapping the 2022 Pittsburgh Pro in the men's classic physique division. We have the top four on stage uh, at this moment here. And uh, gosh darn it, so many new names for me. Uh, it's very exciting. Neil Curry, one of my favorite guys from just across the pond over in the UK, all the way on the left, newcomer to the IFBB, uh, Alexander Westermeer is uh, to his left, a new conversion from open to classic, uh, Camilo Diaz, right next to him. And then all the way on the end is Danielle Costa, another pro debut. So, so many new guys, so many new faces for the classic physique on stage right now. Uh, we're going to run into the award ceremony in just a second, uh, actually right now. So, in fifth place, one of the guys I was so impressed with this young guy, uh, he goes by the name Brandon Kid or uh, B Kid over on Instagram. The last time we saw him was actually at the Tampa Pro last year, place 15th, so just uh, just outside the top 10 by a few placings. And uh, you know, he definitely made some improvements. If you look at these photos right now, a lot tighter in the midsection. Uh, overall presentation was phenomenal. Uh, the way he presented himself when he was doing his posing routine, although I didn't record it, he reminded me of a, a young, smaller Ronnie Coleman. So the future is very bright for him. Uh, look forward to seeing uh, more shows that he does in the near future. Now, this guy, Danny C Costa. Danny Costa or uh, Daniel Costa, he goes by both. So uh, the last time we saw him, uh, besides here, placing fifth place was his pro card win at the, uh, well, what was it, the um, North Americans. So he won the men's classic physique D division or D class, division class. It's one of those, but he put on some size people. I'd like to see some more development in the chest. He seems just a little, um, a little shallow. Apologies for the black screen there, but um, overall phenomenal physique. But uh, you know, is, he's still young. He's only been competing in the NPC since 2017. Big shocker here: Neil Curry ending up in third place. Now, coming out of prejudging, he was the favorite to win. Um, but I think you're going to find out exactly why he did not win this show in this posing routine right here. Look at his legs, and then just look at his posture. Look at his facial expressions. Um, Neil Curry, you know, he's very open about his uh, his uh, gastrointestinal issues, his uh, organ issues that he has, uh, health conditions, you know, uh, and that's why he had to pull out of his last show, the uh, the Texas Pro. Uh, definitely was in the top six, and then uh, had to pull out and couldn't finish. But you can see he's really shaking. Uh, and I don't know if he's just super dehydrated and he's getting cramps or, you know, what's going on. I'm not too sure, but um, it does worry me as a fan. Uh, I love Neil Curry. He's such a cool guy. Uh, and his Instagram feed is so much, uh, so much good content, so inspiring, so motivational, so much fun to watch. He's such a, a monster in the gym, especially when he trains legs. And that's one of his uh, you know, feature pieces is what really sets him apart from um, from the competition. But something with the shaking and, uh, you know, the midsection wasn't always in control in some of the transitions. And I think that that kind of knocked him from first all the way to third. Now, it's not all bad of why he got knocked down. It's also good because of the people that we're going to talk about in just a second here. The, the two gentlemen that play second and first, very impressive showings. Uh, Camilo Diaz came in second place and gosh darn it. Last time we saw him was at Texas last year in the men's open, placed eighth place, uh, and, and he looked good. You know, when I saw him come on the stage, he looked really familiar. I'm like, I know this guy. I've seen this guy before. And then once I did my uh, post <laughs> my post show recap and did all these graphics for y'all to to enjoy, I hope you guys do enjoy this. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to do all this stuff, so I hope you enjoy it. Leave a like if you enjoy it. But uh, 
I like what he does or what he did with the mustache. I'm a mustache guy. He's bringing in a really clean looking mustache. And also, this is his classic physique debut. So you can see with his posing, he came on stage looking hard, looking mean, uh, posing really hard and, uh, and aggressive. And then uh, I, I can't put the audio because obviously copyright, but then he switches into the uh, uh, Italian classic opera music. And it was so beautiful, the transition uh, as he moved from the open music, if you will, into his classic physique debut, top two at a, you know, I'm not sure if this is a tier two show. I wouldn't say it's a tier three, but, um, you know, I've never really covered the Pittsburgh Pro before. So this is a first year for me. And, uh, you know, him coming into this and doing just so well, uh, I think it just really speaks to his potential in men's classic physique. Now, he wasn't a bad open competitor. He placed uh, all the way as high as seventh at a couple different shows last year, the Indy Pro, the Cali Pro. Uh, and then before that, uh, he didn't really do too much uh, competing all the way back since 2017. But I mean, really, I think that the future is very, very bright for Camilo Diaz in the men's classic physique. Just the structure, I think, really complements him. And then also, you know, he took the time. I'm sure he has some really good coaching, some um, the prep coach and the posing coach. Uh, they took the time. They invested those hours into really perfecting this, this package, this presentation. And I think it speaks volumes uh, of the dedication and hard work that he put into his prep with this second place finish. So, you know, big congratulations on his classic physique debut. Speaking and staying with debuts, Alexander, stay with me, Westermere. I think that's close, right? Alexander Westermere, classic physique pro debut, pro debut in general. The last time we saw him was in 2020, quite a while ago. He placed first in men's heavyweight at the 2020 NPC Worldwide Fit Paradise Pro Qualifier. Uh, and, and I'll pull the photos up in just a second here, but... Such an impressive transformation. He looked very bodybuilding-esque in his NPC uh, pro card win, but he just looks like such a classic guy. And I really think that looking through the posing footage we just saw of him with his pro win and Olympia qualification, and then looking at the photos here, uh, I think uh, if he puts a little bit more time in developing his chest, I know everyone says it every time we see a new freaking classic, but I think uh, I think the top six at the Olympia is going to have their hands full battling off Mr. Alexander here. He is so structurally complete. He's a taller guy. I'm a taller guy. I like tall guys. Uh, the classic physique Olympia panel, the judges, they like taller fellas. Uh, historically, they've been rewarding people with, I wouldn't say lengthier structures, but more classic, taller, you know, touching six foot, getting up there. And I think that uh, Mr. Alexander here uh, did a phenomenal job. Uh, I didn't even see him uh, cracking in the top three after prejudging. And that's no disrespect to him. I just, you know, I just thought there's other guys up that were going to, that were going to do it, you know, but wow, did he just impress everyone? And uh, you know, you couldn't, you can't be more happy for him. He just, he really brought an amazing package the conditioning was on point. There's nothing, and that's something really nice about when you see classic physique winners is half the time, most of the time, all the time, if, I, if I'm if i being bold, you don't see a lot of imbalances. You don't see a lot of imperfections. Um, now, I know I, I skipped over it, but uh, Brandon Kidd, he has a little bit of gyno issues, so I'm sure everyone's already told him. I'm sure he knows. <laughs> God in heaven knows. So, you know, y'all don't need to go into his comments and comment that. Like, I already saw that. It was ridiculous. But um, for the most part, classic physique, you're not going to have a lot of imbalances. You're not going to have a lot of issues. And I feel like uh, this is going to be Alexander um, Westermere. Westermere's playground for the next couple of years. I think he's going to be a perennial top six at any tier one show. And I think he's going to do very well at the Olympia. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts, comments, concerns, if any concerns. But let me know how you guys feel about the show. Let me know if you're going to watch the NPC coverage tomorrow and the men's physique. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, finals for tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. My name is Sanj. Check out my links in the description below. 
and I'll see you guys in another one.